We also recognize the profound links between Indo-Pacific security and Euro-Atlantic security. As you know, we now assess that North Korea has sent around 10,000 of its soldiers to train in eastern Russia. And as Secretary of State pointed out earlier, our most recent information indicates that about 8,000 of those DPRK soldiers are now in the Kursk Oblast. Now, we've not yet seen these soldiers deploy in co into combat against Ukraine's forces, but we expect that these North Korean soldiers will join the fight against Ukraine in the coming days. Our assessment is that Putin's forces have trained these North Korean soldiers in artillery operations, UAV operations, and basic infantry operations, including trench clearing. The Kremlin has also provided these DPRK troops with Russian uniforms and equipment. And all of that strongly indicates that Russia intends to use these foreign forces in frontline operations in its war of choice against Ukraine. And make no mistake, if these North Korean troops engage in combat or combat support operations against Ukraine, they would make themselves legitimate military targets. So we are consulting closely with our allies and partners in other countries in the region on these reckless developments and on our response. As I discussed last week in Kyiv, Ukraine's military continues to perform admirably on the battlefield, and Putin's forces have suffered serious losses. In recent months, Ukrainian forces have caused more than 1,200 Russian casualties per day, more than at, than at any other time during Putin's war. And by tin cupping to North Korea for manpower, Putin is showing the world another clear sign of weakness. The Kremlin's North Korean gambit just underscores how badly Putin's war has gone and how much trouble he's in. This is the first time in more than a century that Russia has welcomed foreign troops onto its own soil. As Secretary Blinken noted, a permanent member of the UN Security Council is violating Security Council resolutions that it agreed to. So at the direction of the President, the United States will continue to surge security assistance to Ukraine, and so will our allies and partners in the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. That includes artillery and air defense, armored vehicles, munitions, and other crucial capabilities. The United States will announce additional security assistance for Ukraine in the coming days.